Hello everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. This is part one of a multi-episode series that covers an introduction to rigging. I'm going to show you how to build this, a simple robot arm. No plugins, no paywall, and no bull. This first episode is for the absolute beginner, so if you feel like you might be jumping into uncharted territory, don't worry. This series will give you the basics you need for bringing your own models to life. Because this is going to be a pure rigging series, I'm not going to actually show you how to model anything. However, I will go into detail about what you should consider about a model before you start rigging. And if you can't be bothered modeling anything and just want to jump right into the rigging process, take the time to download this free model I've made and follow along. Okay, we're going to approach this series with six broad chapters. They are understanding what an armature is made of, planning our rig, building our bind rig, creating mechanisms, and finally creating our controls. Now, if you're a complete beginner, I want to say a few things before we start. First is to be patient. Rigging is something that takes time to learn and understand, so don't get too frustrated if you hit a brick wall. Take a break, get some rest, and come back to it. Sometimes the problems are staring right in front of you. It's okay to take your time. Secondly, try to have fun with it. Treat rigging as a puzzle that needs to be solved, and it will be all the more satisfying when things come together. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is distinguish what the difference is between an armature object and the components that lie within them. All right, so we'll just start off by creating a new armature object. Make sure your 3D cursor is set to the center of the world because that's where it will be built. So shift A, scroll down to armature and let's select a single bone. All right, so as you can see, it's created a single bone and an armature object. But if we expand this armature object in the outliner, you'll see that it contains a few things. One is the armature um, itself, and then the bones that sit within them. And then it has the pose. So the pose is basically animation data that we would add to that in the future. An armature object can be edited in three ways. One is in object mode, as we are now. The second is in edit mode, where this is where we would edit our armature to create new bones and um, lay out our actual armature for rigging. And the third option is pose mode, and this is where we would do all of our animation. Generally speaking, the um, armature in object mode is basically uh, a static object. You don't really move it around it's anywhere in 3D space unless you really have to. But for the most part, if you're going to move your armature around, you'd be doing it in pose mode. Okay, unlike other software out there, in Blender, you don't just create multiple armature objects and then start stringing them together with parent con connections and constraints. It doesn't work that way. In Blender, all of your rig is housed inside an armature object. So all the bones you create basically sit within the armature it object itself. So if I tab into edit mode with the bone selected, the armature selected, sorry, and start uh, duplicating, for instance, I can push shift D to duplicate bones. This is how we create our armature as we build out um, our rig. We can also create new bones by pushing shift A, and it will create a default bone wherever your 3D cursor sits in 3D space. You can also extrude bones from one another into out of uh, other bones. And you can also subdivide bones as well. You can parent bones from one to one to another. So I can parent this one to this one by pushing control P with keep offset. So they actually keep the distance together or I can parent a duplicate bone to another bone like this one by connecting it using the connection um, parent uh, relationship and that will actually link the bones together into a bone chain similar to what we got here okay let's jump into edit mode and inspect um, 
what makes up a bone in uh, in Blender. So let's just zoom in. Let's select our bone and jump into edit mode. Now a bone is comprised of three main elements. One, it's the uh, head of the bone, which sits at the base here. The second part is the tail. The third part is basically the bone as a whole. So as a whole, you can move the bone around by selecting the sh basically the shaft of the bone. Let's pop open the item tab on the side here and look at what we got here. So in reality, a bone is comprised of two joints connected by a child slash parent relationship. The head bone determines the pivot. The tailbone determines the direction in which the um, orientation of the bone is in 3D space. Now, let's have a look at what I do, what happens when um, I move the head around in 3D space. If you look at the transform properties, the numbers on the right side in the head properties are moving. The same happens when I move the tail. So if I move the tail around in 3D space, it has its own individual coordinates in which it sits in 3D space. Now, if I move the whole thing together, they all move together with different values, depending on where they sit in that 3D space. And all of these work together to determine the orientation of the joint or of orientation of the bone in pose mode. So let me demonstrate. I'll just create a new bone and I'll edit it a little bit so it just has a bit of transformations on it. I'll also create a second bone, which I haven't touched. Now, if I go into pose mode, things may look a bit like exactly the same, but there really are some differences. For one, I can't select the head and tail individually of these bones. They are now working as a cohesive single unit. The second part is that it now has a traditional sort of transformation attributes. So as you can see, it has location, rotation, and scale. And this one also has location, rotation, and scale. But notice how even though I've changed the direction of this bone in relation to this default bone, the values aren't any different. And that's because in edit mode, we've changed its default space, the resting pose of those bones. Basically, this is important when it comes to rigging because it determines our default bind pose um, that we work from when we start our animations. So everything has to start off at a zero point. So therefore, when we build our joints and our bones in, our, in edit mode, it will be reflected as a zero state, a zero point uh, state in the um, the armature when I we start. So to demonstrate, let me just move this one around in edit mode. I can move this around in 3D space, but again, it has zero values. But if I rotate this in local space, in pose mode, notice how it's inheriting some transforms now. And if I swap up into the rest position of our bones, it goes back to its zero state. If I jump into our pose mode, here we go, back to our animated state. We can reset posed bones by pushing um, Alt R, or if you have movement, Alt G, or if you have scale attributes, you can push Alt S to reset those. Also take note of the pivot points of these bones and also the origin of the armature object itself. Notice how when we're in object mode that the origin of our armature sits in the center of our world where we created our rig to begin with. If we jump back into pose mode, notice how if I rotate the joint that it's pivoting from the head of the bone, not the tail. However, the tail position does inform 
its local axis in 3D space. So if I pop open to global transforms, you can see how in the global space, it's matching our global position in 3D space. If we switch open to local mode, notice how the axes are following the direction in which the tailbone sits. This tailbone actually is informing a lot of things when it comes to the rotation and pivot point of our bone. It determines the twist and the rotations of those bones. And this local sort of orientation is known as the bone roll in Blender, or I like to call it the bone orientation. So the orientation of the joints are super important when it comes to rigging. And we'll get into that in more detail as we work through our rig. But for our purposes at this point, let me demonstrate what that means. So again, I'll bump into edit mode and create a new blank joint. I'm gonna pop open the object data tab. And then I'll go to viewport display and then I'm going to click on axes. Notice how every bone has its own individual axes. This is really important in rigging because it determines the direction in which the bones will rotate in any given axes. So for instance, in this case, let me just reset the pose here. In our case, notice how Z in on our default bone is following in this direction. Um, it, y is always facing in the direction of the head joint or head joint of the bone, and X follows in suit at a right angle to Z. But also notice how, despite the fact that this whole object ha is a single piece, in pose mode, each bone has their own direction and their own local rotation or default orientation to themselves. We can change the orientation of this joint by affecting its roll in edit mode. So the roll determines the direction of Z and X in its local space. Y can never be affected in Blender because it informs the direction of the bone as a whole. So let's pop into edit mode and show you how to affect the roll or the orientation of X and Z. We select the bone and notice how there's a roll attribute here. If we play with that number, notice how the bone theoretically rotates. But it's not really rotating, we're literally just rotating the default orientation of this bone. And if we tab back out into pose mode, Notice how now is X is now following in the same direction as Z, but that's only because of its local orientation. Let's do this with two default joints, or well, bones, sorry. I'm gonna create a new one. I'm gonna slide that to the side on X and create another one. And then I create one more. I'm gonna roll this bone 45 degrees or 90 degrees in the positive. I'm going to roll this bone 90 degrees in the negative. And I'm going to keep the middle one as the default. If we pop into pose mode, and now let's just quickly switch our rotation attributes to X, Y, Z. Make sure they're all set, yep. If I rotate this in Z, positive 90 degrees or positive 45 degrees, sorry. Notice how it's rotating in this direction. If I rotate this one in positive 45 degrees again on Z, it's rotating in a different direction. And again, if I do that again on the third bone, 90 degrees in the Z, positive 45, sorry. It's rotating in that direction. And none of these are incorrect. They're all rotating in the same amount along the Z axis. And that's only because we've changed 
the effective orientation of these bones. And this will be really important again when we rig because we want all our bones to have uniform sort of orientation when we start rigging, especially along things like arms, legs, and the spine. And again, we can reset the pose by clicking Alt-R. Let's reset the orientations of these three, these two joints here, these two bones. Select both of them. And we can actually use a shortcut to actually bring it back in line with our default bone. So to do that, select our three joints, our three bones, and we select uh, the one in which we want the orientation to be matched across all three bones, last. And then we click on Shift N. Shift N brings up a new little pop-up. And then we can say align or recalculate the roll to the last selected bone. So we click that, and now they're all back to that default sort of orientation. All right, I think that's enough for today. In the next video, I'm gonna cover the top six features of a good rig. But until then, catches.